What's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. I am Sunny with I am Sunny Brooks and Soulful Vibes Co. So I wanted to come to you all today to show you all how to create and set up an ancestor altar. I know that my surroundings look different. I just realized that. I know that I'm not in my office and you have the Inspire above my head and stuff. I'm at home and I wanted to film the video to show you all how to set up an altar. Um, what I'm going to do is take you step by step of setting up an ancestor altar. This is not my particular, specific, my personal altar. I'm not going to show you all that. That's personal to me. And my ancestors are not okay with me taking photos of the altar. My ancestors are not okay with me filming them. I'm um, not filming them. Filming the altar or anything like that. So I won't show you my personal altar. But I'm going to show you how to set up an ancestor altar. Um, through it all, I want you to remember to set your altar up how you are being led to. What my ancestors like may not be what your ancestors like. What I'm being led to do, you may not be um, led to do. So just take it a step at a time and do what you're feeling led to. Trust yourself, trust and believe in your ancestors and know that your altar is going to be for your ancestors and not anyone else's ancestors. I am speaking from my experience. I am showing you how to set up an altar from my point of view, what I think, what I believe. Um, and you'll see some things that I do, some people don't resonate with. For example, I put crystals on my ancestor altar. Some people say, you're never supposed to put crystals on your ancestor altar. My ancestors like crystals, so I don't know, right? But follow me, and I'm going to show you how to set up an ancestor altar, and I'm going to take you step by step. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments any questions you have about ancestor altars, ancestors offerings, anything dealing with ancestors. Drop them in the comments. And also, um, let me know if y'all like this environment better. I like this. I kind of like filming from my home. I like how this looks better than my office. But y'all let me know what y'all think. But... Follow along with me. So this is what I'll be using to demonstrate um, setting up an ancestor altar. This is just kind of like a, a work stand desk thing. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a glass. Um, you see it? It's glass here. And this is a stand that we're going to use. And here is some of the items we'll be using to set up an ancestor altar. I'm going to walk you through it now. Don't mind my happy birthday card. All right, so here's how you set up an ancestor altar. The first thing you wanna do is first choose a item that you want to use as an ancestor altar. You can use a bookshelf, you can use a desk, you can use a drawer, you can use whatever you find fit, but this is what we're gonna be using. And the first thing you wanna do after that is cleanse it if my lighter lights. I don't think it's lighting. All right, we'll use this lighter. I am using Palo Santo. Feel free to use white sage, blue sage, sweet grass, cedar, rosemary, whatever you want. I am using Palo Santo to cleanse, not only because it cleanses, but it also welcomes good and positive and harmony. But I want to cleanse it to get all of the energies, all of the vibrations. I want to reset this and set the tone that this is going to be my ancestor altar. I wanna cleanse under it. I wanna cleanse the bottom. I wanna cleanse the top. Remember, feel free to cleanse it however you find fit and cleanse it um, with whatever you find fit. But this is what I use. I'm cleansing it with Palo Santo. And then after I use Palo Santo, I am going to use some Florida water. I use Florida water um, to cleanse, but also bless the ancestor altar. This is I have it in um, I have it in a spray bottle with Florida water and some Rosa Jericho water. So it's basically the water from Rosa Jericho. But I'm gonna spray that and I'm gonna wipe it clean. Um, this is going to be an abbreviated version, right? But I'm going to cleanse it and wipe it with the Florida water. And I'm going to clean under it. And I'll get the whole thing, right? With the Florida water. After that, I personally bless my ancestor altars and whatever altars with 
some oil this is a holy oil um, you can use any oil this is some oil that was blessed and charged back long long time ago and it's lasted me a long time however this is some oil you can use like attraction oils ancestor oils you can use um, love oils whatever oils blessed oils and you just want to bless the altar and set the tone that this is going to be your ancestor altar and set the intentions here we go all right now once it's cleansed and blessed the first thing i do is cover my ancestor altar this is a piece of white fabric it is from michael's you can get about two yards for like nine bucks or something like that but you want to go and get white. Listen, if your ancestors guide you to get another color, feel free. However, I believe in white and I know that white is pure. It is honoring them and that's what my ancestors like. So that's what I use. So I'm going to cover it. This, of course, isn't long enough. But if I was using the whole thing, I would drape it kind of so it can look like that or whatever. But this is just for a demo. So here we go. That. After that, the first thing you want to do is make a list of all of your known ancestors. And if you don't know any of your ancestors, no worries. Just make a frame. You have a frame here. I have a list there. At the top, you can kind of see it says ancestors. I have this card here to cover. Um, this is an old list that I used to use, but I'm not going to share my ancestors' names with you all. However, you are going to list them out. And if you don't know them, um, that's fine. But if you know them, list them. And then at the bottom, I always put all of my known ancestors and all of my unknown ancestors because no matter how many ancestors you know, it is impossible to know all of your ancestors because our lineages go back so far. So you wanna list them out, and if you don't know them, just put to all of my known and unknown ancestors, whatever. This is a way to represent them. This is a way to be reminded of who you are honoring, and you wanna place it wherever you find fit. I am kinda different, so I like to have my altar really neat. And then what you can do is Imagine this is a photo of one of your ancestors or ancestors, whatever. You are going to take this and place it somewhere on your altar. And this is unopened. I got this from Dollar Tree. So you can get this frame. It's a really nice frame from Dollar Tree. And print the picture out at Walgreens or whatever. And those that you do know, place them on your altar, right? And if you don't have any pictures, it's okay, skip that step. Next, what I like to do is represent every element um, on my ancestor altar. So the first thing I like to do is have a candle, a white candle. You can find a white candle anywhere. This is a glass candle, um, but I wanna use a white candle. After, of course, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. This represents fire. When I light it, it is fire and the flame is a spiritual doorbell to the spirit world this is a spiritual doorbell i like to think of it as the doorbell to the heavens right so fire next thing i want to represent is water water so it's a glass of water you can put it in whatever fancy glass you like and put water in it I don't ever put cold water. I put lukewarm water, room temperature water, because I like to keep my um, ancestor altar energy warm, not cold. I don't ever want my, an uh, my ancestors or my ancestor altar or any of my altars to go cold or be cold, so I put lukewarm water. After that, you're going to do something that represents air. So I have two things, a feather. Feathers speak to me, so I use feathers. Um, on my ancestor altar, I actually have some feathers that have um, come to me traveling and different things. So you can put a feather to represent air, or you can use incense. These are third eye incense. You can use different incense that 
speak to you, say if one of your ancestors love lavender. You might want to do lavender incense. Have an incense holder and you can place it there. When you light it, that could represent air. Of course, feathers because from the birds, they fly in air. You get the point. Then earth. Me personally, I represent earth with crystals on my ancestor altar. My ancestors are okay with my ancestor um my ancestors are okay with crystals being on my ancestor altar. Not everyone ancestors like crystals. It's up to you. So I'm going to place some crystals there. Um, and then I also like to represent the ether. People debate and say it's only four elements. I like to believe that there's five elements. The four I just went over. And then ether representing the spirit, right? The spiritual world. This is something to me. This is my chakra wand. Has crystals on it. That represents ether to me so I'm gonna put that on there you can use different like you maybe a Bible um, maybe different things that may represent the spirit realm for you and then this is where you start to dress and adorn your altar this is a plant my altar is living I want my ancestors to continue to live through me so I'm going to put a plant on my altar um, I use also I bring my ancestors fresh fresh flowers so you can bring them fresh flowers um also tobacco this is a cigar my ancestors spirits period love tobacco some spirits don't but nevertheless majority loves tobacco and my ancestors specifically love tobacco um and smoked a lot of tobacco so i'm gonna put a cigar on there this is a shot glass spirits love rum my ancestors love to drink so I put rum in the shot glass. There's no rum in here, so yeah. And I'm gonna sit that there. Then this is where you could put any other items. So say if they love um, to smoke, you could put a lighter there. Say if they love um, whatever, feel free. But say if they love taking baths so you create like a little bath soak and put there or if you want your bath soak to be charged you can place it on your ancestor altar you can place your florida water on your ancestor altar you can dress it however you want this is how i personally set up my ancestor altar this is not my personal ancestor altar i will not show you all my personal ancestor altar but this is an example of how to set up your ancestor altar make sure you have a list of their names pictures if you have that represent each element and then add some of their favorite items and this is a spot right here that i'm going to leave for offerings so when i cook meals when i go out and eat or if I want to bring them back flowers, if I want to bring them back, back wine glasses, whatever, or wine bottles, I'm going to put that there. So a spot for offerings. I give offerings daily, um, but the offerings are not always um, food or flowers. Sometimes it's songs because my ancestors love gospel songs, so I'll sing that to them. It, de it depends exactly on what it is. Every time you come to your altar you want to show homage and respect you want to appreciate and thank them for everything they have done for you everything that they have provided for you because you are who you are because of them and you want to light your candle my candles stay lit as long as i am home when i'm i leave i snuff my candle out i also cleanse my altar um, often so if you want to cleanse your altar maybe weekly bi-weekly monthly be led to it this is how I set up my ancestor altar. If you have any questions on how to set up an ancestor altar or anything in regards to ancestors, feel free to drop them below. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So this is the final setup of the ancestor altar. I have a list of my ancestors. I have ancestor pictures. I have every element represented, fire, air, water, earth, something living offering rum tobacco something i want to charge my florida water so this is the ancestor altar feel free to do it this way or do it a way that you like and feel free to put your ancestor altar in a safe place